Hello, 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 and welcome to People Talk Now. I'm your host, Vanessa Herrero, and this is a show where you ask about it, and I talk about it. And let's not forget, you guys, that we are constantly trying to change the pace out there on what people call better days. So yes, welcome, happy fucking Wednesday, and yeah, if you don't know who I am, my name is Vanessa Herrera, and I'm the host of People Talk Now. And yes, good morning, happy fucking rising. Um... I don't know where everybody's at this morning. I don't know what you're doing. Um, But I hope you're doing it well. And yeah, so yes, I know. You guys are probably like, Vanessa, I don't recognize you. Well, your girl got herself a wig, you feel me? Got herself a wig, let me tell you. (laughs) Um, Yeah, but we'll talk about that another time. I'll spill the tea on that. So... I feel like this episode has been a long, long ass time coming. So, um, I had something else planned for this morning, but I was like, you know what? Episode 43, we got to step up our game. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me, Vanessa, how do you start a podcast? Um, what, what kind of things do I need? Like, how do I even go about getting started? First of all, if you have the idea and you have the drive and you know, like you want to get started, I have some things here on my little little index cards um, that can basically help you get started. Um, but these the these particular items that I have here are just like the bare minimum um, things. But again, if this is something that you're so for sure that you want to do, like you want to start a blogging channel on YouTube or you want to... Um, you know, start a podcast. Again, these are things that you're basically going to have to invest in. You're going to have to invest in yourself if you um, want to do this. So we're going to start, we're going to start with the bare minimum of things you're going to need. So first of all, if you plan on, this all depends. If you plan on doing a podcast, like the way I'm doing it, which is Initially, I started through a podcast host. Um, I used to use Libsyn as a recently, recently I canceled it because I just realized that um, there wasn't much foot traffic really going through Libsyn. Libsyn was a great way for me to start out as a, um, like using a podcast uh, hosting um, kind of thing to kind of get, to kind of get my podcast up and running. But I think if it, it, <laughs> Eventually, what ended up ha- happening was that I decided that I wanted to do um, YouTube videos and I still wanted to do the podcast. And basically, to a lot of you guys, my listeners and newcomers were just like, yo, um, we're, we're, I, like, I want to watch something along with what I'm listening to. And so that kind of like really just like sparked up an idea. And I was just like, yo, I could have like my own little talk show where I talk to people and like I'm still do- being informative but I'm also like still getting to like display who I am as a person and like get the best of both worlds so I converted over to YouTube and started investing more of my time on YouTube and just like consistency and it, it definitely involves work so let's just say that to do both, let's just talk about what kind of things you need to purchase to get you started, well started on your way so that you could do a podcast or you could um, start doing YouTube videos. So first of all, most importantly, you're gonna need a camera if you plan on doing videos. The camera that I'm currently using right now, the one that you are watching me through, um, is a a Sony RX100 uh, 7. And it's basically a vlogging camera. It's been rated one of the best vlogging cameras. There's, you know, a newer version of this one, but you know, I'm not gonna be one of those people, you know, that just upgrades and upgrades and upgrades. Like I, this camera has been working very well for me. I've been making really good vlogs, really good videos with it. And I really, really like it. And I love um, the simplicity of it, how I can just carry it everywhere. Um, So yeah, definitely. It's a good vlogging camera. You heard it from me. Um, that's one of the things you're going to need if you plan on making YouTube videos it's it, or vlogging, whatever you want to say. Like, definitely a camera worth looking into. So, obviously, if you want people to hear you, 
you're going to need to buy a decent microphone. So the microphone that I use um, whenever I want to have like a more intimate sit down, um, you know, sort of podcast, I use the, the Shure mic, the SM7B, and this is a dynamic vocal mic. So this mic is a god, let me tell you. Like, your voice sounds like heaven through this mic. Um, it is roughly, I think, about $399, I would say. I'm not too sure. I gotta look that up. I'll pop it down below once I get the exact price on it right now. But yeah, it's definitely worth the investment if you want good quality audio on your, um, your podcast or on your, uh, even on your YouTube. Again, I've seen people do amazing videos with less, far less, um, you know. So again, don't let that discourage you. If you have something that's um, not even within that price range and is still doing really good for you and it works, then stick with that, you know. Again, these are this, this video is more intended towards someone like, how do I get started in doing this and what kind of things do I need? And I'm letting you know, these are the things that I use. These are the things that you see through the video and the audio okay so definitely get yourself a good mic that's the one that i'm using i'm using the sure sm7b the dynamic vocal mic um get yourself some decent headphones um again headphones i usually use them whenever i'm gonna sit like have a more on like sit down and record through my sm7b mic then I will most likely use headphones. Again, I personally, like, I use my husband's headphones and he has the um, Pioneer DJ headphones. And so, like, I'll use those and those, like, oh, those are my favorite. I can't wait to jack those from him. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, again, so I've seen people record YouTube videos with freaking iPhone headphones. Again, so just get yourself a decent pair of headphones. If you can't afford to get the headphones that I use or any other headphones for that, just get the headphones that you can afford and that you can hear yourself through. So yeah, get yourself a tripod. There's so many tripods. Okay. Currently my camera is sitting on a tripod and this one is really, really cool because, um, I can take photo with it and I can also start the video. So if I'm walking, and I want to start vlogging, I could just push the, um, the movie button and it starts recording, which is really amazing. And it's really easy for when you're walking and you're vlogging. So that's something to definitely keep into consideration. If you're going to, you know, walk with the camera and vlog and be all over the place and stuff, get yourself a really good, uh, tripod for your actual camera that you're going to carry around, but something that's not originally, I used to walk around with this one. So this is another tripod that I have. This one is really cool. Again, if you're going to maybe you need a little bit more height. So this one, um, I can use it for my for my phone. And I can also take this this little off the mount here and um, I can put my camera on it. But it's, my camera is on a smaller tripod right now, which is the one I use for when I'm vlogging. So this one is also from Amazon. And it, what's really cool about this one, and I think it's called Photo Pro is that it comes with like the little clicker, little clicker here. And it has like, I don't know if you guys could see it. Let me see. It has like the little on and off switch right there. So it's not like wasting battery. And this one's really cool, obviously, as well, because it's connected uh, through Bluetooth. And so then you just take photos from your phone. And um, yeah, that's it. You just, you just do that. Um, so obviously, definitely... With tripods, you gotta kind of mess around with them a little bit, find one that works. I mean, I've had, I've gone through a couple of tripods that just were not good. So, you know, you just gotta look around. Um, but this, this one in particular, the Photo Pro, it's, it's been really good. I really like it. I've been using it a lot more lately, especially when I'm like, wanna do recording at the park and things like that. I like it, but definitely like to walk around with this one. I'm not a big fan of walking around just because I feel like a little bit nervous, like as if my camera's gonna, like, I don't know. It's again, it's very flexible. Like you can hold it like this as well. Like you can bend it. Like it could do so much cool stuff. Like you can make it shorter if you had to, but 
again, I'm using a smaller tripod right now and I like holding this one because I can like open the legs out so it can sit and I can also close them back up so I can like walk around. So it's great. So again, definitely get yourself a tripod. That's definitely a must if you're going to be vlogging. Um, also on the, on the actual camera, I have a Rode mic on here. So, you know, it looks like a little, like a little furry pet on here, but that's what you are hearing me through right now. <laughs> and yeah, definitely it's beneficial if you're going to want to get some good qual quality audio. Um, again, right now I'm not using my, my SM7B mic, but I'm using this Rode mic and you know, it works, especially if you have a loud voice like me. <laughs> So, you know, make sure that you get a nice little mic attachment for your camera if you want to get some good quality audio when you're out recording. It's definitely helpful and I don't have the exact price on this, but I'll try to go ahead and get an exact price on this and then I'll put it right there. <laughs> um, another thing that you are going to need is obviously good, a good recording and editing software. Now, this is where it gets tricky because, you know, obviously there's always a lot of, uh, what's the word? A lot of um, different opinions about um, editing softwares and recording software. But if you want to know what I'm using, I, uh, for my recording software, if I, like I said, if I decide to sit down and use my SM7B mic, then I will sit down and I will record it through Logic Pro. Um, but in order for you to do that, in order for you to even uh, record it through Logic Pro X, which is uh, uh, a recording software that I use, I you need a Scarlett interface. Now the one I'm using, you're gonna obviously need an interface so that you can get the the audio in and out, in and out of there, right? So I use the Scarlett interface 2i2. And I don't know the exact price of that, but I'm gonna put it right there after I find out. <laughs> and that's what I'm using whenever I, like I said, I have a more intimate setting and I wanna record at my desk, then that's the one that I use. Um, it's been working very well for me. I've had it for a few years already, I think. Quite, like, yeah, like a few years, definitely. And yeah, so I'm using Logic Pro X. Um, if you want to, if you, if you're like on a budget, I would definitely say like, you know, if you're someone that's starting out and you're like, man, I really need to get it, you know, look out for deals, you know, Logic Pro is always having like a deal here and there where like you get it, you know, discounted, just be on the lookout for it. You know, Hey, I'm not saying anything, but if you have any friends who do music and who, you know, use the software, you know, wink, wink, try to get the hookup. <laughs> um, as far as like my editing software. Um, I'm using Final Cut Pro. Now let me tell you guys, when I first started using Final Cut Pro, I was very intimidated by it. And if you're someone who's very really starting out using Final Cut Pro, it's very intimidating to use at first because you're just like, what the hell is going on? What the fuck is this foreign object? Like, I don't know, you know, it, it's, it's intimidating, you know, especially for someone who maybe hasn't uh, findled with editing in a long time. So I would definitely say just practice. Um, a lot of the things that I've learned in the past few months, definitely I learned through YouTube. So I go to YouTube and I, and I don't give up and I just continue, continue, um, just looking through what it is that I need. Don't focus on like, don't, don't get lost because you know, it can happen. It happened to me a lot. You can get lost in the translation of things and, and I would say just avoid doing that go into YouTube. Like if you're going to look online because like, it's like a black hole, like you can get lost in there. Just go in there with the exact idea that you have in mind, go in there with the idea of like what it is that you're trying to do to your video that you're editing and then go, um, go in there and look for exactly that. So whenever I wanted to figure out like, okay, how are, how are people doing this particular thing on their video? Like, how can I do that? How can I spice up my video? Because the thing, for me is like converting from Libsyn, like the host for my podcast, like they were hosting my podcast through there. So, um, you guys, the listeners or yeah, basically the listeners, 
we're going through there. And I say, you know what? I want to be the, I want to be able to be the one that's working everything. I want to be the person that's, you know, getting like working for, um, for my own, like for my own podcast, you know, like I want to be the host. I want to be the person that puts in the work, the video and everything. And so I want to grow my own audience. Like I don't want someone to do it for me. So, um, yeah. And so like, I was, again, these are things that I, I had in mind. I'm like, how can I do these particular little things that people are used to maybe looking at in YouTube videos? And I would just go and go on YouTube, look it up, find a couple of videos, um, and then just watch it and then go and try it. And basically like, you're not going to learn until you fail. Like you have to fail a couple times and don't be afraid, like spend some time. Um, you're learn through trial and error, basically. Like that's what I did. Don't be afraid. You know, if this is something that you really want to do, you have to put yourself out there. You have to know that, you know, it's not going to go perfect at first until you actually start practicing it. So definitely, you know, you're going to need, um, you know, a recording and editing software. So those are the two that I use. I used Logic Pro X, Final Cut Pro. You could choose to get a podcast host. Um, again, that's it. That's all up to you. There's so many different kinds of podcast hosts now. Um, you can even get your podcast on iTunes. You can get it on Spotify. Uh, I'm going to work on definitely getting mine on Spotify. And, you know, now that I've taken, I've stopped using Libsyn because I just enjoy you guys um, listening so much more to my co- podcast through um through visual, which is YouTube. And eventually I think I definitely will branch out more, but this is just me telling you guys that there's definitely a lot of, you know, options out there. So look, you know, that's what I did. I, I looked for options and I found one, which I thought would work for me. And it did initially, you know, it worked for me in the very beginning when I was still new to the whole podcast scene, but like you get better with everything, like it, like with everything else, you get better in time. Um, you get better like at vlogging, you get, you become more comfortable with the camera. You understand that it's just a camera and it's nothing else. And it just, you just pretend that, um, you're talking to someone across the way from you. And I have a little, t- I have a little tip too. So I used to be very terrible at like focusing on the lens. Um, when you have a blogging camera, there's like a little screen that pops out from the back on my camera. And I would always just like stare at myself on it. And from time to time, I catch myself like looking at it, right? But um, I have a little trick. So if you are want to start blogging and you're just like, oh my God, why can't I like, why can't I stop doing this? Like you mess up and you continue looking at the little screen above. So I got these little um, things right here. And what I did was like, I put one, <laughs> it's my little innovative genius idea. And I put it on the side of the lens and it just says, look here. And it says like, look here. So like, I know I'm like, okay, this is where the person's at. They're right there. They're like here. So it's really helpful. Um, recently I discovered this place. So I thought, why not? Let me share it with you guys. I personally haven't used it yet, but, um, I discovered it recently. So I don't know if you guys have heard it. It's called Alitu. It's A L I T U. And it's a recording and editing, um, basically software. So if you haven't used editing software before, it's even, it's even simple actions in GarageBand. It, if you haven't, if you haven't basically done any kind of editing and, you know, or any kind of audio production and you find it very intimidating, um, it's basically a podcast making tool. So it automates a lot of the confusing technical parts and it practically builds your episode for you. I haven't used it personally yet because you know, I'm just very, I'm very blessed that my husband actually is a audio engineer. Um, he has his, he literally has his credentials to be, you know, he got his diplomas and his plaques all over his studio wall. Um, the, re- the studio that I recorded in, um, last week is where we made magic. <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell you guys what kind of magic, but, um, so yeah, definitely I, I get lucky. Not a lot of people have someone who is basically 
an audio engineer genius and who can basically fix all of you know the audio things for me and like podcasts but if you need help with that and you don't have an audio engineer to go to like I do um, this particular uh, software Alitu is basically built to be super simple and it does pretty much everything so it takes care of audio cleanup it lets you add music it helps you piece together your audio segments and it has direct publishing of your episodes so all you need to do is upload your recordings and use the foolproof podcast specific editor to take out any big mistakes and Alitu does the rest so I just had to share with you guys that one because I ran across it and I like to be very informative so if you feel like wow like I don't know what to do when it comes to that part like about um, you know like fixing up my audio and things like that then don't worry there's even not just this one there is so many more out there you just gotta again go online and do your research and know specifically what it is that you're looking for don't get lost okay and and, and don't get lost don't get lost on the internet please I, I, I don't think I can come find you if you get lost so yes um, thus, that's basically it, you guys. That's a list of the things that I use. Um, I just, I was holding off for a while because I just wanted to be completely comfortable. I wanted to be completely honest with you guys about some of the things that I use. And I wanted to basically be sure. Um, so yes, uh, that's pretty much it as far as the uh, recording equipment goes. Um, oh, how could I like forget about this? So obviously if you plan on recording, um, make sure that you get yourself um, an ample amount of tripods, uh, you know, different kinds of tripods, play around in the beginning. If you're on a budget, again, just get some ones that are exactly what you need. But the reason why I say get an ample amount of tripods is because you just never know when one breaks down, like you even need, even for me, like I have a tripod for, um, for my camera. Like if I need more height or if I'm going to like record maybe a different type of video that I can't do it with, um, with, uh, oh my God, I feel like I have a hair in my freaking face. So yeah, get a, get a decent tripod because, um, you know, you're not going to always be able to record, um, you know videos with a small little tripod like you're gonna at one point you're gonna need a larger tripod because the your scenes at times are gonna change you know you're gonna you gotta experiment basically um so i have one tripod or two that i kind of mess around with but you're also especially if you plan on making youtube videos um it's very important that you have lighting so lighting is also very important because and and this is something that i've known for a long long time because I've always been like, I always tell my husband, you know, I'm like, yeah, like audio and videos is great, but also like good clarity of the videos and lighting is important. So I would definitely say get go, um, you know, I got two, uh, lights off of Amazon or I would have, yeah, like three of them, I think. Um, but definitely like get yourself a couple of lighting, uh, umbrellas, like, you know, some some good YouTube like all you have to do is just go on Amazon or uh, you know search uh, YouTube lighting sets or video sets you know and you will find um, you know the ones that I'm using right now are from limo studio and they work really good they're soft you can put the umbrella on them I'm using one right now and it works really really good um, definitely if you want to do depending on what you want to do or depending on your mood it doesn't really matter because you can use any background you know but you can definitely get backdrops so backdrops is another thing that is you know definitely beneficial if you're gonna if you plan on doing videos so if you're doing more of like you know i've used them for my sit down podcast before when i was sitting down with my um with my sm7b mic so you know, sometimes you want to just have a black backdrop. Maybe you don't feel like having all the things behind you distracting people or maybe it doesn't really matter. But sometimes it's just fun to change your backdrops. If you want to stay in location and you don't want to go anywhere, then changing up backdrops is... And you can definitely also find those on Amazon. You can pretty much find everything on Amazon. <laughs> Surprise. 
anyways so yeah definitely those are things that you need to um keep into consideration i will put the list of these things that you need uh that i use for my you know for recording my podcast and for my youtube i will put a list of these things down below and yeah so yes i hope any of these things that i shared here are very useful and um you know it helped answer some questions for you again more than anything just make sure that if you're going to start the podcast that you know exactly what your podcast or your youtube channel is going to be about if you're going to be blogging and stuff like that have your content ready and more than anything don't be afraid take that step you know um if, if this is something that you really want to do and it, whatever topic it may be and you've been planning it for a long time but you've been putting it on the back burner did i say boina <laughs> Um, on the back burner um definitely you know just take that leap of faith right and if it still scares you understand like imagine if you were outside of yourself um just ask yourself like would would you do this for you right like would you want to fail yourself probably not so I'm just saying, take that chance, take that risk for yourself. Because if nobody else in the world will, then then why why wouldn't you do it for yourself, right? So, yes. Thank you guys so much for listening. And um, I hope any of the things that I said here today helped you out. And that you kind of have like a more better understanding of what you need. What kind of things you need to purchase. Um or get to get started on a podcast or to basically just start a youtube channel so these are just basic little necessities again buy what's within your price range and slowly move up until you can afford certain things you know um talk to people reach out to people that you know already have podcasts people that you know already have youtube channels and ask questions you know and don't be afraid so yes, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, as you guys always know, I always like to leave my show with a word and a joke of the day because, you know, I like you guys leaving my channel with a little bit of humor and, um, you know, new words to use out there to build up that vocab. <laughs> so yes, so let's start with a joke of the day. I don't know why I thought this one was so like... I don't know. It was I to me I thought it was funny because, you know, it was like they saved the best for the end. So, let me just read it to you guys right quick. So, there were two buddies, one with one with a Doberman pincher and the other with a Chihuahua. The guy with the Doberman pincher says to his friend, "Let's go over to the restaurant and get something to eat." The guy with the Chihuahua says, "We can't go in there. We've got dogs with us." The buddy with the Doberman pincher says, "Just follow my lead." They walk over to the restaurant. The guy with the Doberman pincher puts on a pair of dark glasses and he starts to walk in. The bouncer at the door says, sorry man, no pets allowed. The man with the Doberman pincher says, you don't understand, this is my CNI dog. The bouncer says, a Doberman pincher? He answers, yes, they're using them now. They're very good and protect, and protect me from robbers too. So the man at the door says, come on in. Uh, the, the buddy with the Chihuahua figures, what the heck? So he puts on a pair of dark glasses and starts to walk in. Once again, the bouncer says, sorry, pal, no pets allowed. The guy with the chihuahua says, you don't understand. This is my CNI dog. The bouncer at the door says, a chihuahua? The man with the chihuahua says, a chihuahua? They gave me a chihuahua? <laughs> I thought it was so funny because it's like, he's pretending to like be blind and it's like, that, that was a really dope, like, comeback to, to make the guy believe that he was blind. Because it's like, what do you do in that situation? Like, he was about to, like, kick him out. So it's like, he's got to pretend that he's blind, right? So I was like, that is clever. That was clever. You, you guys got You guys know that was funny. If you were listening to that joke, that joke was funny. It was, a little, it, was a, it was a long little story to get to the funny part, but it was worth it. Okay, so... Yes, let's move on to the word of the day. My favorite part of our day together. Are you sipping on your tea this morning? Good. Because you know, you know your girl don't drink coffee. She quit coffee like it's been a hot minute. 
And uh, yeah. So the word of the day is called. Loosh. Loosh. Almost sounds like douche. Loosh. Loosh. So loosh is spelled L O U C H E. The definition of loosh is not reputable or decent. So did you know loosh, louche, ultimately comes from the Latin word luscus, meaning blind in one eye? That's crazy that I would be saying this because today I've had something in my right eye and it kind of swelled up a little bit. And I tried to put ice on it earlier, but, you know, I was like trying not to blink so much in this video, but, you know, forgive me if I, if I was, because it hurt. Um, or having poor sight. This Latin term gave rise to French luche, meaning squinting or cross-eyed. The French gave their term a figurative sense um, as well, taking that squinty look to mean shady or devious. English speakers didn't see the need for the sight impaired. Um, I lost my place. Oh, <laughs> for the sight impaired uses when they borrowed the term in the 19th century, but they kept the figurative one. The word is still quite visible today and is used to describe both people and things of questionable rip, rip, <laughs> reputation. <laughs> um, so, yes, Luche. Luche. Oh, Luche. I said Luche because I saw it over here say Luche. <laughs> so, yes, go out and use the word Luche. And um, hashtag people talk now. Uh, share it in your IG stories and I'll, and I'll go ahead and share it. Share the love, share the wealth, you know? And let me know how you would use it in a sentence. So yes, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a huge thumbs up. Um, share it. Um, and most, more importantly than anything, please do not forget to subscribe down below and hook a sister up. Spread the love, spread the wealth, spread the positivity because goddamn, we could use more of that in this world. Wouldn't you agree? And yes, um, I hope this video was helpful because I'm feeling pretty helpful this morning. <sighs> All right. So again, I don't know why the, this gardener, you know what? I, that was really rude of me. He's just doing his job. But I don't know why he always chooses to do that when I'm recording. Anyways, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Have a have a kick-ass Wednesday, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next video. Bye.